Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very senior professional, a high achiever from the US, Mr. Ram V. Iyer. Ram, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ashutosh. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Ram is the president of the I Achiever Institute, and we'll be talking about this. He's a thought leader, author, keynote speaker, business thinker, and immigrant achiever. He's also a podcast host. So Ram, let's start by talking about your incredible journey and how you went from a middle-class family in a small town to an accomplished MIT alumni to flame out to a better way to greater success. <laughs> That'll take a long time. I'll give you the skinny version. Absolutely. My, my father was the first graduate from uh, in his entire family. He mm-hmm. had six siblings or seven, six siblings mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in Palghat in Kerala. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, my mother was the first woman mm-hmm. to even finish high school. Wow. Uh, so. Both of them became teachers. My father was a high school principal for 30 years. Mm-hmm. My mother was a high school teacher for 20. So one of the things that they taught us, uh, me and my two younger sisters, was the importance of education. Mm-hmm. So between my two sisters and our three spouses, you know, remember my yeah. father was the first graduate in mm-hmm. the entire family. Mm-hmm. Between my two sisters and our three spouses, we have 14 master's degrees. Wow. Okay, so education was like, so So I still remember the time when uh, I got into MIT and uh, I called my dad and I told him, and you know what his reaction was? Typical middle-class parent. Mm-hmm. What took you so long? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, 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 you know, so I was, I was always a big dreamer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, the, 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 the motto I've been carrying around is, do not be average. Mm-hmm. In a definition, a definition of an achiever is somebody who is above average right. and successful. Mm. So uh, I've always uh, strived to be b- uh, above average. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I was, I was never the smartest person in any group I was in. Mm. But I would always work my tail off. I was mm. probably the hardest working in the mm-hmm. group. Okay. And that usually made up for it. Mm. So the second part of it is, you know, being above average is one thing, but being successful is another thing. Mm. Many of us think that just because you get an education, you're automatically going to be successful. Mm. That couldn't be farther from the truth, because okay. what it takes to succeed is a lot more than education. Also, mm. a good education is a good foundation to build from. Well said. Mm. It's a good foundation. So in other words, people who say you don't need an education, you can succeed. BS. Mm. That gives you, it, it opens, like say, for example, this morning, I, I sent an email to a few friends and a partner at McKinsey called me up and said, hey, Ram, you know, I read this article you wrote and, you know, mm. I had this thought, that thought, we talked. Mm. And if you don't have an education, a partner at McKinsey is not going to call you. Absolutely. Well, I sincerely hope a lot of people who are, who keep asking, why do Indians make it to the top in America are listening to this conversation and your words of advice. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I, 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 I share it very freely. You know, I remember one time I give, I'm a keynote speaker as well. I was once uh, a part of a panel mm-hmm. and somebody said, uh, tell me one or two key things mm. that you learned from uh, graduating from MIT or from MIT. Mm. And I hadn't heard that question before. Mm. I said, one thing I said was, MIT taught me to think mm-hmm. differently. Mm think differently. Mm-hmm. More important, perhaps the most important thing I got out of MIT is that I expected more of myself. Mm. One of the biggest reasons mm. why people are not successful in life mm. is not because they don't have a certain education, they didn't go to a certain college, come mm. from a certain family, have certain wealth. I don't. I think all of those are lesser factors. Correct. The most important thing is do you expect more of yourself? Mm. If you say to yourself, mm. I mean, I have a survey that I run. Mm. If you say to yourself, I want a life about as good as my parents. Mm. 
guess what? You're not aspiring to be big enough. You're not thinking big enough. Most importantly, you're not expecting much from yourself. Mm. As long as you don't expect much from yourself, mm. why do you think you'll be more successful? Correct. <laughs> it's like, duh. Because even if somebody, if, if you give me Ashutosh, the recipe to become a billionaire, mm -hmm. right? If my expectation of myself is low, I'm going to be resisting it. Well said. Well said. I'm going to be pulling it back. So, I agree. I agree. So, so, you know, I've had my successes. I, I, I worked for Lucent. I was a uh, an executive at Lucent uh, running marketing and strategy mm. for a $4.5 billion business. Yeah. But that was 25 years ago. Mm. Um, and then I was a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley. Okay. And then I started, I'm on my fifth company now. Mm -hmm. But one of them served clients in 16 countries. Mm. And the next one almost drove me to bankruptcy. Okay. And I said, why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? Mm. Et cetera. And those are the things I figured out over the last 10 years or so. Mm. And I speak about it, write about it, teach people about it. And, and do, you want, do you want to tell us about this one uh, failure that you had? Yeah. See, so so this was a, a venture that I had cooked up. I had a successful venture going, the one that served clients in 16 countries. Right. Mm. But I was the main sales guy. I was the one selling. Mm. And I sold many big, uh, I got many big accounts. I got DuPont. I got Pfizer. I got uh, Cargill, which is one of the world's largest food yeah. processing companies, mm. Sony, many. Mm. Farming jobs and so on. But I was unhappy doing that. So mm. I said, I see a huge opportunity in the mid-market, mid-sized companies, what in India they call SMEs. Yeah. And I built the largest portal for SMEs in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you go and type in middle market or mid-market, it would come to my site. Mm. And I spent zero dollars on promoting it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so it blew up. And when it blew up, I said, what happened? Mm. So I picked up the phone, called up my friends at MIT, MIT classmates, HBS friends, Deloitte, McKinsey, etc. Mm. I said, why did this happen to me? Mm. They said, it happened because you didn't have the right team, you didn't have the right technology, you didn't have enough capital. I said, guys, I've, mm. I've heard all of this when I was in business school mm. many, many moons ago. Mm. There was something else that caused me to fail. Mm. And uh, after about eight weeks, I do what is called a hard thinking project. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for eight weeks. And week nine, I realized a pattern in what these people were saying. Mm -hmm. They were all saying, I failed because I lack something. Mm -hmm. Two, everything they said I lacked was external. Mm -hmm. Correct. People, technology. It's kind of like saying, Ashtosh, you'd be more successful if you wore a gray suit. Mm -hmm. You'd be more successful if you colored your hair. You'd be more successful if you wore new glasses. Mm. They come up with all yeah. these things. Right? Mm. And invariably, the person who's giving you advice mm. is somebody who's selling one of those things. Correct. <laughs> so, so I stopped and I said, one, something I lacked. Mm -hmm. Two, something external to me. Mm. So I used a technique called inversion thinking. Mm -hmm. I said, what if I fail not because I lack something, but because I have something? Mm. Two, what if it was not external to me, but internal to me? Mm. So in other words, did I fail because mm. of who I am? Yeah. Because of who I was at that point. Yeah. And that is a hard question to ask because you're yeah. saying, Ashutosh, are you a screw up? Tell me why. Mm. It, it's kind of like, you know, even asking that question is hard. Coming up with answers is even mm. more difficult. Absolutely. But I came up with three answers. Mm. And... Uh, that day, picked up the phone, called my friends, and they said, this is what I figured out. They said, oh, interesting way of thinking about it. In that mm. case, let me tell you how else you screwed up. Mm. <laughs> so okay. the list grew. Mm. And then uh, one of them was the worldwide head of alumni relations at McKinsey. Mm -hmm. So Sean said, why don't you come up to Boston and give a talk? Then I spoke at MIT. I spoke to the Sloan Club of Boston, mm. the Tech Association of Boston. Then I got invited to speak at Harvard. Mm. So, so the things I talked about, I call those the silent killers of success. Mm. Things within us mm -hmm. and around us that we we are aware, we may be aware, but sometimes we are not aware. But mm. we say, you know what? I have enough strengths I mm. manage. Mm. Your strengths will only grow to a certain point in life. So maybe right. until your thirties. Mm. Okay, 
after that, your strengths only grow incrementally. Mm. But you've been ignoring failures. They come along with you like a shadow. Mm. They never leave you. Right. So once you get to mid-career and later, mm. these come and bite you. Mm. In other words, you're pulled down by these disablers. Yeah. yeah, well said. Well said. So let me move on. And uh, I'm going to ask you one more question and then come to I Achievers Institute. You say disablers are more important to diagnose and mitigate than enablers. And I'm assuming you've just spoken a little bit about it. Yeah, see, <clears throat> I came upon a rather uh, simple, in, in fact, I was talking to my friend Subhan mm. this morning about it. Mm. Um, see, you know your strengths. Mm. You're good with people. You're good at speaking. You're good at this. Guess what? You tend to use and reuse and overuse. Mm. Maybe overuse is not the right word. To keep yeah. reusing what you're good at. Mm. So you're already using your strengths. Correct. Okay? So that will take you to a certain point. So mm. I think about it like and it keeps going up. Mm. Then you kind of hit a plateau because you're not getting much stronger. Correct. Okay. In the meantime, you have disablers that continue to follow you. Mm. Okay. Since your enablers cannot help you a whole lot more anymore. Mm. They can help you, but not a whole lot more. Mm. The easiest way is to get rid of these disablers. Think about it this way. Hmm. Let's say you're running a 100-meter race hmm. and you have a backpack with 100 kilos in it. Hmm. Okay? What is the quickest way you can run fast? Quickest way? The getting rid of the backpack. Those are disablers. Hmm. Ah, okay. Those are disablers. So the thing is, most people uh, are very uncomfortable hmm. Uh, asking themselves this question, like I was the, the inversion thinking example yeah, again, yeah, yeah. Of what what is wrong with me, or you know what's holding me back? Right. We usually blame. It's like you know the reason I'm not successful is Ashutosh's fault, mm. or the weather wasn't good, or you mm. know the economy. We blame somebody else. Yeah. We never take personal responsibility. Absolutely. Well said. Very well said. Okay. Very well said. Ram, let's now move to I Achiever Institute. I have some other questions also. But I, you know, you are the president of I Achiever Institute. I want to know what are you doing here? And then I'll weave in one or two more questions as you talk about I Achiever. Absolutely. See, what I'm doing now, you know, because see, we go through, most of us go through most of our lives mm. trying to imitate somebody else. Correct. I want to be like Ashutosh. I want to be like Elon Musk. I mm. want to be like, there is a long list. Yeah. Okay? Each one of them has gotten to that point, mm. uh, honing what they're already good at mm. okay so for you to try and do it you'll never become that person correct but the single biggest thing most people do not do single biggest thing mm. they don't understand themselves mm. i'm not asking you to go to a retreat or an ashram yeah that's not the point the mm. point is understand yourself and ask yourself what is it that i do well mm. you know what value can i bring mm. because if i say ashutosh give me a million dollars mm. The first question you will ask is, why should mm. I give you a million dollars? Mm. Mm. Right? So in other words, I have to provide value to you. Correct. If you go and ask most people, mm. I bet you a vast majority of them do not know the answer to that question. Absolutely. So self-understanding is super, super important. Mm. So I did that. And then I said, what helped me? I figured out some strengths. And then... And then I tripped upon these disablers. Mm. Like I have one very interesting assessment, which has been taken by over a thousand people. Mm -hmm. Okay. You answer 17 questions. Okay. Okay. It will tell you with a 81% certainty, like in five minutes, yeah. six minutes, whether you're likely to make more money in life or not. Wow. Whether you're likely to succeed in business or not. Mm. I'm an MIT guy. I'm not BSing you, right? This is like actual absolutely actual data. But, but tell me, I mean, if if uh, the many many viewers and listeners who are listening, who will listen to this conversation, want to take the 17 question test, yeah. is it available somewhere on your website? It's on my website. So my okay. personal website is very simple. My MIT three letters. Mm. My first name Ram. My last name Ayer. Mm. So mitramayer.com. Okay, so that that. On the top in the menu menu bar, there is one option for assessments. Wonderful. 
But to, to finish answering your question, yeah. so I figured that out. Mm -hmm. Second thing I found out was, you know, remember I told you about things within us that prevent us from succeeding? Yeah. I said, what are those? So I went and made a big list, my list and other people's list. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that everybody carries silent killers of success. Mm -hmm. You do, I do. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a bad temper. You can hide it from people. Mm -hmm. Only your wife and kids may know about it. Nobody else knows. Mm -hmm. But if you and I have an argument about something, right, or we are having a hot debate, mm -hmm. your temper will flare. Correct. Not because you wanted to, but mm -hmm. because it's always been there. You flushed it under the carpet, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. So the silent killers, I've created an assessment for that. Mm -hmm. There are 19 types of silent killers. Okay. Wow. If you diagnose those, mm -hmm. you know which of those are not silent killers, mm -hmm. which of them are. Wow. So think of silent killers as things that are essentially fighting with your, your, your ego, fighting your whatever you're looking mm -hmm. to do. Your ego usually wins. Absolutely. It's your reptilian brain. Mm. Okay. So if you are aware of what it is, you can mitigate this. Right. Right. Third thing, I, after I spoke at MIT, I got invited to speak at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And I said, how many people should I expect for the talk? Uh, they said, oh, you'll get about 40 or 50 people. It's a Tuesday. Mm. And they said, you need to come up with a good title for the talk. And I said, why many smart people are not as successful as they think they should be. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm. You know how many people showed up for the yeah. talk? Mm -hmm. 220 people showed up. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Because it hit a nerve. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then I said, wait a minute. You know, the reason I did that was because I said, I'm an MIT guy. You know, I'm, mm. I'm going to be successful. And when I failed, when that venture failed, um, I said, why? And mm. I figured out a bunch of reasons. So then I went to two psychologists mm. who I consult with very regularly. Mm -hmm. And we identified 59 items, 59 reasons why smart people are not successful. Mm -hmm. They looked at it and they said, Ram, this is too big a list. They boiled it out down to all down to 15 factors. Mm. So if you say I'm struggling, anybody will have this. Each of these 15 factors could be enablers or mm. disablers. Yeah. Each of those. And you so and you explain to us how important disablers are as well in our lives. Anyway, mm. So so for example, like a, a smart person, I say I'm very smart. Ashutosh, not so much. Mm. So I'm not going to work with Ashutosh. Mm. Who is it hurting? It's not hurting Ashutosh. It's okay. hurting me. Absolutely right. Right. So so we we have this assessment, fifteen mm. of them, mm. uh, and each one of them could be an enabler or disabler. Mm. I had one guy call me up a month ago. Uh, he said, Ram, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. I'm 52 years old. Mm -hmm. And I now understand why I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. He was an MIT bachelor's in computer science, okay. MIT master's in computer science, and wow. MIT PhD in computer science. Wow. Okay. 52 years old, living mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck. Out of the 15 factors, he had 13 disablers. Wow. And two of them were medium, meaning that they were not enablers. Mm. So you can say he had 15 disablers. So these are insights that I have, but I said, mm. I can't possibly lecture to everybody. Nobody wants to be lectured. Mm. Mm. But if I show you a mirror and you say, I have a pimple here, mm. who found the pimple? Not mm. me. Mm. You did. I can see the pimple, but it is always easier psychologically if you find the pimple yourself. Mm. Right? It's your own work. So I have an assessment that helps people identify why smart people are not successful. And keep in mind, this mm. has nothing to do with which school you went to. Absolutely. You may have gone to the uh, Kasturba, you know, uh, I'm, I'm making up a mm, name, mm, mm. college mm. in some rural place, you know, mm. in Rajasthan. Yeah. Right? But if you think I am smart, you will have some of the factors come into play immediately. Correct. Correct. It's how you, what you feel about yourself that matters, the smartness. Mm -hmm. So I focus on these three things. I'm writing books about them. Mm -hmm. I've designed a very unique game, very unique mm -hmm. game. See, nobody wants to say, be told, Ashutosh, this is why you're not making money. You mm -hmm. don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Two, you don't want to be told, here are the three reasons. You're like, you're finding fault with me? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Here is how you fix it. You don't want to be told. Mm -hmm. Right? So I took all of those, rolled it into a game, 
it is a combination of monopoly, mm -hmm. snakes and ladders, mm -hmm. and life. Amazing. Those three. And it'll be released next month. Well, so awesome. you play it as a board game, and as you play, you say, hmm, why should I choose this and not that? Oh, that deals with the approach to making money. So mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example. Mm -hmm. Most people say, approach somebody. Let's say you and I are doing a transaction. Mm -hmm. you say, how can I get, pick some number, $1,000 from Ashutosh mm -hmm. without having to give him much mm -hmm. or with very little effort? Yeah. So if I'm not putting in $1,000 worth of effort mm -hmm. and I'm not justifying getting $1,000, mm -hmm. why do I think I should get $1,000? Most of us look for good deals or something for nothing. Mm. That is a thief mentality, which is how most people approach transactions, mm. whether they say it explicitly or not. Amazing. So you take that and flip it. There mm. are also people who give away stuff. Ashutosh mm. asked, oh, let me give it. It's worth yeah. $1,000, but I'll mm. give it to Ashutosh. Mm. But who's not making money? Who's not able to make a living? Mm. Me. Mm. Whose fault is that? My fault. Yep. I call them suckers. Mm. <laughs> the third group of people yeah. go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. Mm. They never stay with anything for long enough mm. to either succeed or fail or learn from it. Mm. So in other words, they do a little bit, they dabble. I call them hobbyists. Okay. And the fourth kind are people who say, Ashtosh, I'm going to do the following four things for you. Mm. Price for that is $1,000. Mm. And Ashtosh goes, okay, if you're going to do those four things, I'll pay you $1,000. Those mm. are called, I call them fair traders. Mm. So those are four very basic types. So the game is, it's called the I money game. Amazing. So I money game. Mm. Make more money by conquering the world. Mm. So we have themes of all seven continents. Mm -hmm. And you have paths, just like on Monopoly yeah. and you know, et etc. If you do certain right things, you know, you'll keep moving up. You do the wrong things, you'll go down. Amazing. It teaches you about mindset mm -hmm. because money is made in your head long before it's made in real life. Correct. Three, it teaches you a process of business thinking. So, for example, if you go and say Marwadis, Baniyas, mm -hmm. Jews, they're all good business people, or Patels, good Jews, right? mm -hmm. they have already learned to think a certain way, which enables them to make money, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. enables them to succeed in business. Correct. But how can somebody who's a son of a teacher, Brahmin family in South India, learn that. Oh. You play this game repeatedly. Mm. It'll over and over and over and over and, again. And, and, and hopefully get you many, many more enablers uh, in your Correct. own. Correct. Correct. Because you, you have to make these mental adjustments yeah. and they don't happen just because somebody tells you something. Absolutely. Speaking. And I'm hoping that I'll see this game not just in a board form, but digital as well. No, it is only coming out digital. Only digital, okay. Only, yeah, it's coming out digital. So we're going to start out with entrepreneurs first, then business owners, then I'm doing business leaders. Mm. Then we'll have many variations. Uh, I've got about uh, 50 or 60 variations yeah. I've conceived. Well, because I, can see, I can see uh, an MIT mind is very, very active even in as far as games are concerned. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, see, we can, we, we make, we're going to make a game. I'm collecting data now. Mm. Uh, I, my, I, I money game for women. Mm. Women have certain mindsets yeah. that disable them. Correct. If you can kind of teach them what the right mindsets ought to be, mm. they'll make more money. Absolutely. You can have, you know, uh, you know uh, for, for you can uh, pick any have, segment, any segment, and there's an opportunity. I agree with you. Wonderful. Good luck to you on this. Ram, I have time for one more question. And uh, this is for the many, many young people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your amazing journey, your amazing um, you know work that you have done, I achiever, all your learnings, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from your journey and from our conversation? See, the world measures your success. Yeah. based on money. Yeah. But money is not the end point. Money is a means to the end. Yeah. We are really looking for control over our, our time, uh, satisfaction in doing what you're doing, etc. Correct. Right. Um, so don't pursue money for the sake of pursuing money. Correct. Two, understand yourself. Don't try to be somebody else because yeah. 
the greatest success you are capable of having in your life, the greatest yeah. success, is being the best version of yourself. Correct. So if you're looking to improve, benchmark yourself. Yeah. If you're looking to raise your game, yeah. benchmark people, but benchmark different people for different things. Correct. Three, mm. the biggest way you can become more successful in life, the mm. biggest way is to expect more of yourself. Mm. Very Because powerful. if you're my dad and you're disappointed, I only have to deal with you when I meet you. Correct. But the rest of the time, between the times you and I meet, I have to live with myself. Well said. If I'm a, I'm, so if I'm not expecting more of myself, because I, 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 I'm not kidding you that, Mm. I dream about this game design and stuff I write when I'm sleeping. I wake up in the morning at three and I said, oh, I have an idea. Mm. And I jump out of bed, come to my PC and I write an article. Yeah. So I publish on LinkedIn. I publish two or three times every week. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners either follow you already on LinkedIn or I'm sure they will now reach out to you on LinkedIn. I follow you and I get some a lot of insights. But on that note, Ram, uh, and your three amazing lessons. The world measures success based on money, but this is not the end. It's only a means to the end. Uh, understand yourself and see the best version of yourself. And the third one is expect more of yourself. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your incredible journey. Thank you for talking to me about enablers and disablers, which I learned for the first time today from you. Thank you also for sharing with us how you have developed the 15 diagnostic tests to determine various aspects of each one of our personalities and what makes us succeed and what that helps us to succeed more and more. And finally, thank you so much for sharing with me your amazing game that is coming out in a month or two months. And I'm looking forward to being able to put my hands and fingers on that game. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.